Welcome to school today, boys and girls. Today, we're going to talk about ways that we can improve the way that we learn. We're going to be looking at the research of Robert Marzano. Now, don't let this get out, but I have taken his research, these nine ways of learning, and I renamed them so that I could remember them just a little bit better. I renamed them so that they would start with each letter of the first nine letters in the alphabet. That way I could remember them. So let's look at these nine ways that we can improve the way we learn. Instead of A is for apple and B is for ball, we're going to go alike and different. Try that right where you're sitting, alike and different. The most important thing that you can do when you're learning something new is ask yourself, how is this alike or different from something that I already know? B is for boil it all down. Summarize it. Take what you're learning and summarize it. C is a fun one. Celebrate. Celebrate. D is do it once again. Do it once again. Do it over and over. Repetition. Now, I needed a letter E for talking about the way your brain receives information and reorganizes it. So I chose the term extrasensory. So what I did was made a circle here about the size of your brain. Go ahead. I want to see if your brains are bigger than mine. Some are bigger than others, it looks like. Okay, what we do with that is it's not only sight and sound, these kinds of things, but it's movement, it's music, it's taking performances, acting out the information, extrasensory. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the brains of people around you, we're going to have study groups, and we're going to make a great big brain or F family of learners. These are study groups, collaboration. G is set a goal. Set a goal. You set a goal, you'll learn something. H is for hypothesize. What if? These are two of the most powerful words in the English language, and they are the beginning of all inventions. What if we did this? What if we learned it this way? What if we learned it that way? I is inquiry, asking questions. Inquire as you go. Okay, now class, this is the audience partition, participation part. Please stand. Class, we'll go through these. And let's review first. Notice these nine strategies. Notice the letters of the alphabet. That'll kind of help you but I will guide you through this. I want you to be able to pick out your favorite that you use most often or the combination of the ones you use. Are we ready, class? Are we ready? So, yes, Mr. Shirley, we're ready. <laughs> yes, Mr. Shirley, thank you. Okay, class, do and say, do and repeat after me. Alike and different. Alike and different. Boil it all down. Boil it all down. Celebrate, celebrate. Do it once again. Do it once again. Extra sensory. Extra sensory. Family of learners. Family of learners. Set a goal. Set a goal. Hypothesize. Hypothesize. Inquire as you go. Inquire as you go. Oh, very good class. You won't have to stay after school today. Re reach back, pat yourself on the back. You're doing a good job. Give your neighbor a high five. These strategies work. They always have. They always will. They worked for me, <clears throat> they worked for me back in 1964. Back when I was cute. <laughs> I'm in the sixth grade and we're learning about helping verbs. I was not impressed. 
This is actually the list of words that we were given, these 15 helping verbs. I was not impressed until the teacher said, anyone who can name all 15 of these helping verbs on a test tomorrow will get a prize. I wanted that prize. So I took it home. I played around with this list. I reorganized it. And I made up a little song that went with it. I still know that song after 52 years. Are you ready? <clears throat> Am is, was, were, making, has, have, had, shall, will, could, should be, been. <laughs> I was so proud. I couldn't wait to take the test. And that was different from me. For, for me. I couldn't wait to take that test. I walked into class and I said, Mr. Murray, is it time for the test? Is it time for the test? He looked at me like, what? Well, by the time he had passed out the papers, I had filled in all 15 of these. He asked me if I'd cheated, and I said, no, I didn't cheat. It was the song. He said, what song? I said, I wrote a song. You wrote a song? I wrote a song. <laughs> he said, would you sing it for the class? And I said, do I get the prize? <laughs> you know, I was negotiating as a young man there. Schools understand this, and they use these principles. In the, in the school, in Lincoln Elementary, where I'm the principal, the teachers understand how these nine strategies work. I hear it in children walking down the hall, singing songs about numbers and letters, and line up, line up, and helping verbs, English, grammar, math, you name it. Songs have a way of doing that and just embedding it in their minds. Churches understand this. In the church that I'm a member of, we have what's called a primary. And in the primary, it's mostly the little kids. And I was asked to be the music leader. You talk about a fun job. That was the best job in the world. Every Sunday, I'd take my guitar to church, and we would rock on the gospel. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so much fun. But we wrote on the hearts of those kids things about God. I think back when I was four or five years old, and I was in primary those songs are still there. They're powerful. Businesses understand this. When my daughter was in high school, she worked for a fast food uh, hamburger place. And uh, in the training for the, uh, the workers, they taught them a song on how to put the hamburger together and the, the, the order, the ingredients, and everything. After 20 years or more, my daughter can still sing that song. Plus, it guarantees the quality of the hamburger that you'll get. Businesses understand this because they use it in advertisements continuously. Advertisements train you and teach you how to buy either their product or their services. They do it with jingles. They do it with continuous, repetitious advertisements that we all know and love. One last story I'd like to tell you about is Keith. Keith Grover was one of my students in third grade many, many years ago. We were learning, we were learning how, about how to alphabetize things. That was the subject of the lesson. And we decided as a class to learn the alphabet backwards. And so we had races, and the kids got so excited about it. 
for, for several days that I'd come to school and the kids would say, Mr. Shirley, Mr. Shirley, can we do the alphabet backwards game today? Can we do that? Please, 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 please. We had competitions and Keith was very, very good at saying the alphabet backwards. I never thought much more about it. I lost track of Keith. Many, many, many years later, I was principal over summer school and I had this idea to have the National Guard bring some equipment to our school. So I made some phone calls. I ended up speaking with Captain Keith Grover. And he said, yes, I'll bring some equipment. I'll bring some equipment. To our playground of our school, he brought an Apache helicopter. <laughs> you talk about overkill. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I hope I was nice to him when he was in my class. <laughs> he got up in front of the students and he talked about the importance of education. And of all the stories in the world that he could have told, he told a story about learning the alphabet backwards in Mr. Shirley's class. It seems that as a military pilot, you need to know the alphabet forwards as well as you do backwards. You don't know what lessons are going to stick on the minds of those that you teach when you use these kinds of things to write on their heart. It very well may be that they are writing things on their own hearts. So whether it's a dorky looking little kid learning how to, to memorize helping verbs, or it's another dorky little kid that's learning how to say the alphabet backwards and then in the future defending our country. We really don't know. But you can make a difference in what you write on the hearts of these kids. 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus took these principles and he used them in many different forms. One of them was he wrapped them up in parables. Before, that, before him was David and Solomon and they knew how to take the message that they had and hang it on a song. What will be your song? What will you write on the hearts of your students? Now students, your assignment, now that we've covered our objective, you know a little bit more about these principles. Your assignment, is to think of these principles that we have learned. Boil them down. Take them home. Watch them over and over again. Find something here tonight that you can write on your heart and that you will write on the hearts of those you teach. You now have the tools that you need. I ask you, please, please, make a difference in education. Class dismissed. <laughs>